week on One Devotion. Meet the captain who had one foot out the door before becoming his team's leader. Learn about a veteran playmaker who embraces his role as a booster off the bench. Hear how one player's EuroLeague return started off rough, but keeps getting better. And review all the heart-stopping action in the first round of the season's longest phase. With seven seasons, 130 games and well over a thousand points to his name, Fernando Sanemeterio is well established as one of the great players of Laboral Cucha Vitoria's distinguished EuroLeague history. But very nearly none of it happened, because Sanemeterio came extremely close to leaving the Spanish club in the summer of 2009, before his Vitoria story had even properly started. The season 2008-2009 wasn't uh, easy for me. I didn't play a lot of minutes the, the, uh, here. Uh, Pete Michael, Sergi Vidal, uh, Rakosevic, so I, I didn't have a lot of minutes. I tried to work every day uh, very good, but at the end of that year, uh, the president called my agent and, and told us to, to the best thing is to find another team. And we, we found it. We found uh, uh, Sevilla. So I was really close. I was uh, looking for houses there with my wife. So I was close to, to, to go to Sevilla. But at the end, the club uh, decided to, to sell Sergi Vidal to Madrid. So I had a place here in Vitoria. Having come very close to leaving the club after just one season, San Emeterio recalls he was absolutely determined to prove himself by the time he took advantage of a major opportunity to gain more playing time when the team was affected by injuries. That summer mentally I was uh, anxious to, to the season start, to, to show everybody that I can play here or in Sevilla, but I was uh, really, really determined to, to, to go to this goal. And I think that was a, a key moment. And when I saw the opportunity, because uh, the injuries of Walter Herman or, or Carl Inglis in that moment, I, I said, this is my moment, I have to, to, to take it. And seize the opportunity, San Emeterio certainly did. His 2009-2010 season ended with a career-changing moment when San Emeterio scored a winning basket as Laboral took the Spanish title. In less than a year, he had been transformed from outcast to hero. It's a moment I will uh, remember for the rest of my life because it's a, a special moment that I don't know if I'm going to live again. So uh, I remember me when I went to the bed that night and, and thinking like, enjoy that because uh, you don't know if you're going to uh, uh, be in this moment again. That historic basket acted as a catalyst for an outstanding career. The very next season, San Emeterio was named on the All Euroleague first team as Laboral progressed as far as the playoffs. And two years later, he again led his team to the brink of the final four. By then, San Emeterio was firmly established as a fan favourite, not just for his role in the team, but also for his never say die attitude, epitomising the famous Basconia fighting spirit. And he admits the relationship he enjoys with the team's supporters means a lot to him. I love the fans of, of Vitoria because they appreciate all your effort you do. Uh, they, like, they love basketball and uh, if you miss one shot, they understand. They, they, they just want you to, to play hard every minute, to play hard every moment and then it's okay and they, they appreciate you and they respect you. That's what I, what I like of uh, these fans. Indeed, appreciation of San Emeterio's determined attitude is not just limited to northern Spain, with basketball fans all over Europe recognising the character he brings to the floor. But as his team's long-serving captain and emblematic player, San Emeterio will forever be associated with Laboral Cucha Vitoria. And he is grateful for everything that happened since that decisive moment many summers ago, when fates conspired to keep him in Vitoria. I'm, 
I'm so happy when I when I came here uh, seven years ago. I wanted to to be part of this organization, to be part of this uh, uh, big team in Europe. I have my my signature, no, with this basket we talked uh, we talked before, and it's a thing that I will I will be proud. I came here like a single. I go, I will go with a wife, a daughter, so my life uh, changed even outside the basketball. So I, it's a city that uh, I will always remember. Oliver Lafayette of Olympiakos Piraeus is a fine example of one of the most selfless roles in basketball. The sixth man, whose job it is to come off the bench and continue or improve upon the work carried out by the starters. Over four seasons in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague, only 17 of Lafayette's 54 appearances have been as a starter. This year with Olympiakos, he has started only one of nine games, yet still averages more than 20 minutes on the floor. Similarly, last season with Valencia, the 30-year-old didn't start any of the Spanish team's 24 games in the Euro Cup, but still averaged 22 minutes per game as they went all the way to the title. Lafayette says that it was during his time with Valencia that he fully embraced the idea of affecting the game from the bench. I accepted a role last year in Valencia. My coach um, asked me, came to ask me um, to help the um, second squad out. We was having trouble scoring, scoring the basketball and things like that, and getting the, um, getting the second team to play like the first team. So I accepted the role then as a challenge to my teammates um, just to get better and be a better team. Although Lafayette does not often start games, the first few minutes of action are far from idle for bench players, who use that time to study the play, make judgments about how the game is unfolding, and decide how they can make the best impact when they are introduced. And he says one factor is more important than any other. The speed of the game, um, you, you, you're able to judge the speed of the game while you're on the bench, see, what, see what's going wrong, see what's doing, going right. One thing is judging the speed, but another is matching it, which Lafayette says is any substitute point guard's very first task. You can't get warmed up, you gotta keep on running full speed just to get the offense going at a great, at a great pace, defensively um, trying to stop the basketball full court and things like that. So far this season, Lafayette owns the highest three-point percentage on Olympiacos, while hitting the team's second most shots from long range, despite the fact that he considers offensive production to be the hardest part of his job. Coming off the bench, um, I say the offense is harder. Um, it's harder to get into a rhythm because people are already in full speed, um, the ball's already moving fast, things like that, but defense is kind of easy because you can control the pace of the game. If he had to give advice for other sixth men, however, Lafayette would also stress the mental aspect of the game as a key to being successful coming off the bench, night in and night out. Just stay focused. Um, stay focused on what your job is to do. If your job is to stop the basketball, uh, put pressure on the basketball, um, just stay focused on your job. And when you do your job well, the game comes easy. The top 16 opened in thrilling fashion this week. Panathinaikos and Galatasaray claimed important comeback home wins in Group E before Real Madrid held off Cervena Zvezda in Belgrade and Alba Berlin shocked FC Barcelona. 
The biggest shock of round one was provided by Alba Berlin, which rallied from a big early deficit to defeat powerhouse Barcelona on the back of 16 points and eight rebounds apiece from Jamel McLean and Reggie Redding. Leaving Marcelinho Huertas on the loose inside, despite registering 23 points and seven assists. But there was no such upset for fellow Spanish giants Real Madrid, which used a powerful second half from Rudy Fernandez to overcome a tough challenge from Cervena Zvezda, whose offense got nine assists from Stefan Jovic. Madrid's backcourt Sergios, Rodriguez and Yui also played a key role, combining for 16 assists. In Athens, the reliable duo of James Gist and Dimitris Diamantidis, aided by a powerful inside display from Esteban Batista, masterminded a fine comeback win for Panathinaikos over champions Maccabi, after 18 points apiece for Brian Randall and Nate Linhart had given the reigning champions a dominant lead. Debutant Justin Carter provided some big plays as Galatasaray fought back to claim victory against Shalkiris, with Zoran Erseg also producing another influential display. Alba Berlin's 10-point victory was the biggest win in margin in Group E, with Galatasaray, Panathinaikos and Real Madrid also off to winning starts. In Group F, Seska edged Fenerbahce in an overtime thriller. FS stood their ground against Laboral Vitoria in Spain. Nizhny Novgorod enjoyed a sensational top 16 debut in Milan. And Olympiakos completed a hat-trick of road wins against Tunicaja. A clash of the titans in Istanbul saw former coaching colleagues Shelko Obradovic and Dimitri Sitoudis go head-to-head -head for the first time in the EuroLeague. After a scintillating 40 minutes, Sonny Weems forced overtime and Seska finished with six players scoring in double figures to maintain its perfect season. While Andrew Gaudelot top scored with 19 points in defeat for Fenerbahce. Another regular season group winner, Olympiakos, fell behind early on against Tunicaja, but then roared back through Vasilis Panoulis and Othello Hunter, taking a low-scoring game as Panoulis finished with a career-high 10 assists. Another tight road win was claimed by Anadolu Efes, as 15 points from Stratos Perperoglu helped overcome 16 for Laboral Kuchas Mirza Begic. There was a sensational top 16 debut for Nizhny Novgorod, which welcomed back the regular season's best scorer, Taylor Rochester, and saw him and Trey Tompkins both score 19 points to tee up a crushing victory over host EA7 Milan. Nizhny Novgorod sits top of the rankings after a mightily impressive 20 point road win, with Olympiakos, Anadolu Efes, and still unbeaten Seska Moscow also wasting no time in recording their first top 16 victories. Although he was one of the marquee signings last summer on one of the top teams in the competition, point guard Nando De Colo didn't get to return to the Turkish Airlines Euroleague this season exactly as he would have liked. A month after signing with Seska Moscow on the eve of the FIBA World Cup, De Colo broke his hand and had to miss his French national team's run to a bronze medal. It wasn't easy to be injured with the national team, but uh, I came with, uh, with CSK and they were passionate with me. The injury also meant that De Colo could not play during Seska's pre-season, but that didn't prevent him from getting to know his new team. They just know it was bad luck, so just take focus on what the team do, you know, try to, to, to be with the team because I was with them during the pre-season in Greece. And after day by day, just to, to come back in the team and now everything is doing good. Indeed, it was during that otherwise idle pre-season that good times started rolling for De Colour with the birth of his first child, a daughter. 
It's great. Uh, you know, it's something uh, important for me to, to, to build a family. You know, I got three sisters and nephews, so I know how it is it to, to, to have a family. So now to have mine uh, with, with my girlfriend and, and my little daughter is very great. On the court, Decolor got healthy in time to make sure that Seska did not miss a beat when starting point guard Milos Teodosic went down with his own injury. Decolor averaged 18 points over Seska's first four games without Teodosic while setting his EuroLeague career highs in scoring, rebounds, assists and performance index rating. Overtime heroics in the team's closest game helped preserve Seska's status as the sole undefeated team in the EuroLeague regular season. Having tasted the thrill of winning the Euro Cup and European National Championships earlier this decade, Decolor now feels so good with Seska that he doesn't mind setting his sights on taking a run at the biggest continental trophy of all by reaching the 2015 Final Four in Madrid. Of course, it's a wish, you know. It's what I signed to CSK because I know it's a team who, who went in the past every time to the Final Four and they build uh, every season a good team to, to do it and to, to win the EuroLeague. So now we, we know, we know all the players, how is it to, to be on this team and what they expect from us. And now we will do all our possible to, to do it. David Moss from uh, EA set there in Portio Armani, Milano. And we're sitting here with, introduce yourself. Samarta Samuels, EA7, Emporio Armani. Okay, I got a couple questions for you, Sam. So, last, first of all, last year was your first EuroLeague season? See, si. yep. Okay, what was your favorite moment of the entire season? Winning in Fenerbahce, you know, the atmosphere was crazy. The fans there, they're, you know, they're really into basketball, you can tell. And us winning that game, that was like one of the highlights of last year. Okay, uh, what are your goals for uh, us this year as a team? We didn't set a goal last year as a team, and we did really well, so following the same trend, you know. Um, hopefully we can get back to the same position that we was in last year and we can know how to handle that situation better. You got some questions for me? For sure, man. Um, what's the hair product you use for the dread? <laughs> <laughs> Does this have nothing to do with basketball? <laughs> you know, those curiosity? Uh, well, uh, I don't know. They uh, went to the beauty the beauty place on um, Via Magetta and he, you know, he washed it and conditioned it and then he, I guess he put like some dye in it and now it's all black. So, it's you know. glowing, it's glowing. I love <laughs> it. As a kid growing up, what was the favorite vintage jersey that David Moss remember owning? As a kid, I didn't really have any jerseys. I, we were, we were struggling, <laughs> we were struggling. So I think if I was to look back and say whose jersey I would like to have back then, it would have been Walter Payton. Uh, and he was number 34, Chicago Bears, great running back, and uh, Sweetness is his nickname, he's a legend. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, thank you for joining us, myself and Samardo. I hope you enjoyed our interview and- uh, Peace out. Big Sam.
two games out due to injury did nothing to slow down the regular season's best scorer as Nizhny Novgorod guard Taylor Rochesty returned to action with a bang this week as the first B-Win MVP of the top 16. Rochester was everywhere while leading Nizhny to a historic first top 16 win by 59-79 over host EA7 Emporia Armani Milan on Friday. Coming off the bench late in the first quarter, he set about feeding teammates on the way to eight assists, matching his Euroleague career high. But with his team training at half-time, Rochester turned his attention to the basket and scored 17 of his 19 points in the second half as Nizhny raced to victory in stunning fashion. Rochester added four rebounds and was a perfect 6-for-6 six six from the free-throw line too, contributing to a performance index rating of 32, which equaled his own previous best and was the highest among all EuroLeague players in the top 16 round one. Now the top five plays of round one of the top 16. Number five, Istanbul, Turkey. Kyle Hines is one of the smallest centers in the league, but his incredible athleticism allows him to make plays like this to block Nemanja Bjelica. Number four, Belgrade, Serbia. Master passer, Sergio Rodriguez fires a pinpoint no-look pass to Andres Nocioni in the corner and he does the rest, driving along the baseline for a one-handed slam and it was all about the pass. Number three, Athens, Greece. The acrobatic Jeremy Pargo flies to the rim for Maccabi but the one and only James Gist takes off like Superman to reject the shot with authority. Number two, Malaga, Spain, for Silas Spanoulis, and a fellow hunter with the stars of the show for Olympiakos, as the Greek team opened its top 16 campaign with a victory. Here they combine for a picture-perfect alley -oop slam, Hunter. Number one, play of the week, Istanbul, Turkey. Explosive action as Aaron Jackson tries to score, but Ricky Hickman never say die. An incredible athleticism, and he makes a superb block, Ricky Hickman. Top 16 Round 2 comes your way next week with four Thursday thrillers, including the Game of the Week, with as many showdowns on Friday set to include one of the great modern classics. Game of the Week will be held in the Peace and Friendship Stadium in Piraeus, Greece, where Olympiakos will host EA7 Milan as a stellar duel in the middle of the floor features a standard bearer in the backcourt, Vasily Spanoulis, going up against visiting challenger Daniel Hackett. Group E, a classic comes to Barcelona, where the hosts face off again with Panathinaikos Athens in another of their historic series of great battles. The leadership of Marcelino Huertas will be as important once again for Barcelona as the instant offence from AJ Slaughter for the Greens. Another great appointment in this group will be played in Tel Aviv, where reigning champion Maccabi will be challenged by Servena Svedsta Telecom Belgrade. Maccabi will count as usual on points and rebounds from do-it-all Devin Smith, while Marcus Williams will try to use his passing skills to give the visitors an edge on the road. Also in Group E, Real Madrid takes on visiting Galatasaray Live Hospital Istanbul, while Jalgiris Kaunas plays host to Alba Berlin. In Group F, mighty Seska Moscow celebrates its top 16 home opener with a visit from Laboral Cucha Vitoria of Spain in what will be a very interesting matchup between like minded forwards Andrei Vronsevic for the hosts and Tornike Schengelia for the guests. In the same group and country, Russia, Nizhny Novgorod will try to cook at home against strong Fenerbahce Ulke Istanbul, as scoring machine Taylor Rochester is called to lead the hosts against another terrific shooter, Andrew Gaudlock.
The remaining Group F game features Anadolu Efes welcoming Unica Hamalaga on Thursday. Catch it all in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague next week.